Well, thank you. And now I'm pleased to recognize for three minutes the Chairman of the Middle East and South Asia uh, Subcommittee, the gentleman from New York, Mr. Ackerman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the 112th Congress, the challenge before our witnesses and before those of us returning in January will be the same. How do we prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons? It is, I believe, the most critical national security question facing our nation today, and the success or failure of our efforts will determine what kind of world our children will inherit. Iran's drive to acquire nuclear weapons is near to success, but it has not yet succeeded, and it must not. The consequences of a successful effort by Iran to acquire nuclear weapons in open defiance of numerous UN Security Council resolutions, solemnly undertaken treaty obligations, and amid an endless stream of genocidal rhetoric against the State of Israel would change the world, and this must not happen. The implementation of new sanctions so far has been surprisingly successful, with the combined effect of UN sanctions and the new Sasada sanctions imposing real economic pain on the Ayatollah's regime. But for pressure to succeed, it must be comprehensive, and here there are two points to make. First, the economic pain must be as severe as we can make it. Sanctions must be applied without exception or distinction. The Congress will accept nothing less. Second, economic pain is not enough. By luck or providence, the Mullah's regime is facing an, international political, an internal political crisis more severe than any since the creation of the Islamic Republic. While it is true the Green Movement has been effective, effectively suppressed by the tools of repression, the legitimacy of the Iranian regime has been permanently undercut in the eyes of the Iranian people. Elections whose results have to be forced down an unwilling population's throat by means of mass murder, rape, torture, or a sign of weakness, and that weakness needs to be aggressively exploited. I call again upon the Obama administration to emulate the Reagan, President Reagan's approach to the Soviet Union, which applied comprehensive, across-the-board pressure with combined economic, political, diplomatic, cultural, and military pressure with arms control negotiations, what we might call today engagement that advanced American interests. The Iranian regime is likewise ripe for comprehensive pressure. Multilateral forums and multinational institutions need to be pushed to focus Iran's deplorable human rights record. Our broadcasting into Iran must be ramped up to let the Iranian people know that they are not alone. The President and the Secretary of State need to consistently remind the world of the oppression of the Iranian people by the illegitimate Iranian regime. The armed forces of the United States need to be deployed and exercised with key partners to demonstrate our ability to respond overwhelmingly to aggression and provocation. Those willing to take up arms against Iran's Iranian influence should have our material support. Iranian agents attempting subversion or the acquisition of illicit materials or arms must feel the shadow of the United States pursuing them with vengeance. It is not too late to stop Iran to roll back the nuclear program to aid the Iranian people in taking back their country. But we must engage in this great and necessary challenge with even greater effort and vigor than we have managed so far. Time is running out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At what point do we make the determination that the sanctions, no matter how successful in, in, in measurable aspects, are not going to prevent the Iranians whose game is intent to just run the clock on us till they have the weapon, that we have to find and exercise an alternative means. Where, where is that point? Well, Mr. Ackerman, I can't, I can't give you a precise point. I mean, all I can say is that I think there's still time uh, to uh, continue the approach that we've used to tighten pressure uh, to try to make clear that there is an alternative pathway uh, through which Iran could have a peaceful nuclear program and enjoy the benefits of contacts with the international community, but it's going to have to take some very concrete steps to address international concerns about its nuclear program. I think there's still time for a serious diplomatic effort to try to produce that outcome. And I'll, I'll ask the same question of both the Secretary Levy. I was just going to comment, Mr. Ackerman. I think uh, the distinction that you've drawn between North Korea and Iran, and also uh, th there are differences, I think, also in uh, the potential effectiveness of sanctions. And uh, the basic point, I think, is that Iran doesn't want to be isolated. And perhaps that's not so much the case with North Korea. Iran doesn't want to be isolated. They're facing situations as they look, as they look out from where they are now. They see 
uh, lack of investment coming in. They see the inability to do business with major financial firms. They see the inability to do business with first-tier energy firms. They see that that has potential impact on their oil and gas production in the medium term, the inability to create jobs, et cetera. They don't want to be this kind of pariah. And that, well, as, as uh, Bill pointed out, there's no guarantee here. That at least gives us some reason for confidence that they'll let's, want to let's change assume that, that Let's assume that you're wildly successful. And in a period of, I'll give it 90 days, you've, you've, you've cut their GNP, their economy, and everything else by 99 percent. And they have an atomic weapon. They have a nuclear weapon. W where are we? Like, I, I, think, I think the point I is... Think they're, I, think they're, I think your clock runs faster than theirs, is the point I'm making. And I think that we have to have a plan B. Because plan A, by anybody's estimation, even if, if successful beyond our wildest dreams in a real quick time frame, is not going to change the dynamic. 